Uh, and we are live. Uh, Griffo, karibu sana. Welcome, welcome. Uh, it's good to have Griffo. you here. Um, guys, uh, if you're watching right now, karibu, uh, remember this is a one-on-one interview we are having with uh, Griffin Okombe, who is out there in Italy. Um, I'm not sure how to mention that name, Griffin. <laughs> Um, you play for hockey club. Hockey. Uh, just mention it for me, just so, <laughs> for the sake of uh, saving me from the embarrassment of pronunciations. <laughs> hockey club Potenza Picena. Ah, okay. Uh, so Griffin, tell me, how are you, man? How have you been? Um, how's life there? Everything changed, man. Yeah. Everything changed. Uh, um, I'm good. Yeah. Hey, I'm I'm safe as mm-hmm. of now. Mm-hmm. Things are going well. Yeah. We are uh, comfort. Yeah. I don't know how you are. Things down there. Mm, yeah. Things here. Yeah, um, they are a bit tricky because uh, the government is uh, is doing things slow. In my opinion, I think the coffee is starting today, at uh, 7 p.m. to. Uh, 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. curfew. It's it's starting today, so um, there are more cases being reported. Uh, so it's, it, we are currently in a state of uh, shock at the moment because you know most guys thought that it wouldn't happen, but now it's happening. Yeah, I can understand. Yeah, yeah. So um, sorry, guys. This is something that uh, we we have to test. We haven't tested the stream yet, so. That's why you're, look, you're having me look at my phone. So anyway, Griffin, uh, tell me, um, you started playing in Italy last year. Uh, I started playing in Italy in uh, 2018. 20, oh, sorry, two years ago. Oh. Yeah, this is this this is your third season or second season? This is my second season, but now the second part of the season. Ah, okay. So you play both uh, indoor and outdoor. So let's start with the, the outdoor hockey. How is it? Um, how are you? How have you fared on? How's the experience playing in Italy? First time I arrived here, um, first of all, I had the culture shock, mm-hmm. inclusive of uh, food and everything, mm-hmm. and uh, culture that I was used to a different uh, setup growing up and everything. Mm-hmm. And then uh, that obviously affected my playing mm-hmm. because I was taking it at a professional level for the first time in my okay. life. And uh, I really had to adjust quickly because uh, here people focus on results and they want results and they're really pushing for it. So I had like um, mm-hmm. two months. I had no time, I had no time to dilly mm-hmm. dally around. So going on forward, uh, I adjusted very quickly. I adapted to the environment, to the playing style, shifted yeah. very quickly, and I've been doing very progressively. Mm-hmm. That's what I can say on a general perspective. Um, and how can you say, is it a big leap from, um, you were playing, of course, at that time I was the coach at KU, you were playing for KU, then all of a sudden you went to Italy. Um uh, I know it's a big leap. Uh, did you have like guys um, there helping you? You know, there is that language barrier, of course. Um, how are the how are the other teammates? Uh, were they helpful? Uh, did you get um, close to someone instantly to assist you to settle in? Yeah, um, yeah. Um, my, very friend, my very first best friend was the coach because he's able to speak English and Spanish as well. So we could uh, relate easily, but the problem was that every time he was explaining a drill, maybe during training and communication, mm-hmm. he had to do it again in um, in English specifically yeah. for me. Uh, they, uh, they came in because uh, they don't speak English, they speak mm-hmm. Italian. That is their main language. And unlike us, English is just an optional subject in their schooling mm-hmm. programs. So two of them... Uh, do it or if they do it they don't really practice it uh, language barrier was a problem so I had friends coming in people coming in and uh, the impression that there was someone who can speak English was a good uh, thing for them because uh, they get to practice what they have studied ah, in okay. school and mm. quickly I, I, I teach them English they teach me Italian 
in terms of uh, adjusting to the game uh, yes it was a very big leap because uh, you can clearly see the difference of our style of playing structure right from uh, basic things such as moving mm-hmm. the ball how you receive uh, your everything and um, from the first day, from the first day of my training my first session you could notice that uh, there was that difference mm-hmm. of our playing style and their mm-hmm. playing style and so to be quickly and to, quickly and to deliver results because that was part of what mm-hmm. brought me here i had to do sessions along yeah. with the coach yeah. extra sessions and uh, i had just ah, very okay. quickly Yeah so um how's training like um how many times a week do you guys train how many hours uh, in a day so how's yeah. training yeah okay yeah uh, the the current difficulty we have is that uh, we have to train mm-hmm. at night from sometimes 8 pm to 10 pm or 10:30 so it's basically 3 hours this is because uh, most of the young lads in the team are studying working and uh, it's difficult to have all team members during the day so we train three times a week that's at night and um three serious training sessions in a week um it depends with the, our level of um, adjustment as we move on and uh, your opponents coming in because now it's uh, you know at a club basis you have to train according to your opponent So we really focus on who we are playing next we go game by game and the training keeps changing the drills keep changing yeah but uh, what i will say in terms of training here the commitment is 100% self clean everything is 100% you're either in or out they don't have played with you you're either in or out from us yeah not a, yeah first of, all, we understand first of all we understand that hockey is not as uh, is not as good as football in terms of uh, earnings yeah. and everything we are almost there but we're not there so people have to have their own lives as well people have something and uh, yeah okay so um what about the the end of season uh, i think currently you are you are playing the end of season before the the sanctions and the lockdown came in so how is it there yeah yeah uh, indo is a uh, indo is a totally different game <laughs> the first time i played indo i, I couldn't understand anything <laughs> because first of all the ball cannot raise you cannot raise the ball you know i was playing totally different surface i had never played uh, you know on a wood surface before soft wood uh, sort of a, sometimes you can also do it in a, on a basketball court i think and uh, you're not allowed to raise the ball you're not allowed to make uh, you're not allowed to do a drive you're not allowed to do such things they have these rules that uh, adjusting to them is very difficult and it's a very fast game really have to you really have to be smart and intelligent to play this game so that was the it was very difficult for the first time because <laughs> because i had never done uh, but uh, by training slowly by slowly i adjusted i must uh, i think i was the most improved player for the indo i think in my opinion this is my i did very well and uh, you know how it functions we do it uh, five mm-hmm. players on the pitch plus the six goalie minutes. your six players six against mm-hmm. six six yeah and uh, normally it's, uh, and, uh, normally it's um, mm-hmm. random substitution but a very quick game but a very quick game so i was doing uh, for indo so i, was doing, uh, for indo, I mm-hmm. played as a defender and and let me ask uh, do both seasons run concurrently or the outdoor season has to end so that uh, you start the indoor no this is what they do because they do because uh, we have uh, four seasons in terms of uh, climatic changes and weather adjustments here autumn spring summer and winter now during winter it's very difficult to play outdoor because it's very cold probably snowing in some areas and uh, during this period that we play the indoor now what happens is that 
the first part of the outdoor season, the first leg, you do it and um, just after summer you start. And you do it for around two months and uh, during the start of uh, the cold season, we should get it to Indo. So we have uh, between uh, December and February to play indoor games. And then uh, March or late March, we go back to outdoor to finish the second part of the season. That's uh, how they do it. Ah, okay. So um, which divisions do you play? Uh, that is the outdoor and indoor. Which um, Is it the second division, third division, uh, premier division? For the outdoor, we play in the. Um, it's called Serie A Due. It's uh, the second division of the mm-hmm. of the hockey category. Then for the indoor, we play uh, again the second division. Okay, so um, in terms of the league yeah. structure, like say the the outdoor. Um, how is it? Is it that the winner goes through? Is are there playoffs? Ah, okay. Uh, for instance, for our for our case, we um, the federation divides the the teams into two, um, all the two, depending on the region where you are coming from. So we have like the northern the northern region and the southern region. And, uh, each team has um, uh, eight or eight to nine, eight to seven. Each each category, each group, they are called the Irone like group A and group B. So uh, in each uh, group, one team proceeds uh, to the next level, the winner, the winner. If you don't win, uh, you probably think about the next season. This book here, um, Peter Katera asks, uh, what is your expectation in terms of diet and performance? I think basically speaking about uh, your training and and match preparations. Yeah, that's something that uh, I really had to change immediately because uh, home you really have to mm-hmm. invest in everything. Uh, you understand that uh, hockey is a game that um, depends much on the kinetic motion of the body and the kinetic transfer and everything, and whatever you matters. Well, Playing in KU, I just used to eat and go and play, you know, eat, <laughs> eat whatever, this KBS, <laughs> you just eat and go and play, but uh, now I focus much, uh, I will give you my, my, my normal diet schedule, I focus much on uh, vegetable proteins and uh, salads, fruit salad, fruit salad, I try as much as possible to avoid junks quick foods yeah so in terms of uh, your performance and diet i think for you to perform well you really need to adjust your diet that is a it plays a very key role in your performance and uh, do you have someone let's say uh, let one of the coaches who takes care of your diet like looks at, at uh, your body type tells you this is the uh, the amount you need to eat this is what you need to eat or is it upon you as players to come up with your own diet and and uh, uh, schedule for training that is uh, that actually depends uh, because the coach has all this planned but uh, will advise you on what to eat or what uh, but he may not follow up strictly because uh, people have different. Uh, people come from different backgrounds, and they mm-hmm. people come from families. They, it's not a uh, majorly upon your decision to decide mm-hmm. what to eat and everything. But uh, he insists on. Uh, they insist on this is what you should be eating in this mm-hmm. particular time of the season. This is what you should be avoid in this mm-hmm. particular time of the season. Thing on it. So the, uh, basically, they give mm-hmm. guidelines to it. Okay. Now, coming to now a typical day um, in, in training uh, leading towards, let's say, a match. Um, just walk us through. I know you might not give us full details about uh, your training uh, schedule of, of, for obvious reasons, but uh, just walk us through a typical day 
uh, what you go through that is uh, during the day, as you said, you uh, you train at night, um, uh, leading towards the training and after training. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, okay. So um, during the day, I I am probably mm-hmm. working either in school because I've also been doing a sort of hockey promotion in schools. Uh, we. We go around in schools. Uh, we have uh, schedules with schools. We have agreements with schools, programs with schools. I think it's uh, it's something they do it here and something we should really buy from them because we start at uh, grassroots junior levels. Schools, uh, you know the PE sessions in Kenya. You understand the PE session sessions. Sports and uh, now sports professionals come in to help in. So I, I go to school, I go as a member of uh, Hockey yeah. Club Potenza Pichena. And the idea is to hockey to let people understand that this game is played like this and mm-hmm. they do it this way and they do it this way. Uh, Probably they, uh, someone else is going there. Maybe another sport, volleyball, basketball, mm-hmm. it really depends. So it's uh, from the word go. You're competing from uh, even instilling the knowledge, uh, getting these uh, mm-hmm. kids to play for your team, signing these kids as early as uh, that's uh, normally what I do during the day. And then uh, from there, I will go back home and uh, we go to training because I also help with the coaching under 10, under 16, under, 16th, under 12. And from there again, um, we prepare for training uh, during the night. So I will say it's, uh, it's quite a long day. Uh, getting yourself work uh, in more at least 10 to 12 hours a day is uh, it's quite long. Finishing up with the training, three-hour session, serious session. Probably it's a running day. You have a lot of running, workout day, physical, uh, all these things. It's, uh, it's quite heavy. It really requires a lot of commitment and discipline. Um, uh, moving on to, to the next bit is um, obviously we, we know the situation that is in the country, uh, that is Italy currently. Um, regarding the coronavirus, um, yesterday we ha- we had a quick chat about it with you, and uh, uh, I also gave you the situation here in the country. So how is it? How is it there? How how is the situation? Because now you're someone who's um, there um, on the ground, experiencing it on a daily basis. So um, you know we we get news off the telly or online, but how is it? How's the situation there? Uh, not good at all. Uh, not good at all. Whatever you see is uh, what is happening. Um, I will give you a brief, uh, a, gr- a brief, a brief history of how how it happened to us, to me, how it ended up affecting uh, our sport as hockey potenza Pichena. You see, on thirty uh, first January, we are. Uh, it being announced in the telly for the first time that uh, two Chinese officials, uh, two Chinese tourists were tested positive uh, for the virus in Rome. That started. And uh, the government responded responded immediately by um, declaring a state of emergency, by suspending on, on all flights to China, uh, sort of. And then Days later, we had uh, one Italian testing positive, but it was coming again from China. The same way it's happening down here slowly by slowly. Um, they ended up uh, declaring red zones, you know, red zones, green zones, that these places, you should be careful, these places should not go. But uh, by that time, uh, we didn't have a lot of cases. Now, on uh, because it was during our indoor season, on 21st February, we were we were doing the finals for the promotion. We were playing in a place called Brescia, and uh, close to northern Italy. Uh, on the first day, we played, and uh, ca- more cases were reported, more tests were being done. We played, and we had qualified for the semi-finals. The next day, we were scheduled uh, to play the fa- the semi-finals and the finals. But in the morning. We woke up from the hotel where we were sleeping, prepared, psyched for the match. And we arrived uh, and we were told uh, the Federation suspended all the matches. 
that is how the news uh, started, get, get, started getting scary to us. That is how things started changing. And you know the reaction, of course, why? No, no one has the virus here, of course. No, 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 no. People were saying, no, it's not possible. We want to play. It's just one match. We're going to and That was how it, it was. And after that, it was uh, every day. Every day, new cases, more cases. So it was one, ten, a hundred, a thousand. And boom, that was it. So the, the reality is that... Uh, the virus is really mm-hmm. spreading fast, and so the government had to, and so the government had to uh, force a lockdown, uh, like, uh, force a lockdown, like a permanent yeah. lockdown for everything mm-hmm. except for supermarkets, mm-hmm. pharmacies. And that's the current situation. We are and that's the current situation we are so, in right now. Yeah, you're not allowed to go out. Not allowed mm-hmm. to roam around. Let's go over permit, mm-hmm. permit yeah. to go out, and uh, for you to get. I mean, it, it, it must be a very crucial, mm-hmm. crucial case. Just to, make sure that the virus Just to make sure that the virus is passing and uh, to curb the mm-hmm. infection. Yeah. And uh, how, how do you get supplies, let's say, for food, um, uh, other supplies, like, let's say, you need to buy toothpaste, um, let's say, medicine? Um, how, how do you get them? So, as you yeah. said, there is a total curfew lockdown. You can't go out. Yeah. Uh, okay. We have uh, areas such as uh, I'll just mention, mm-hmm. like Lombardy, which are really affected. Mm-hmm. Areas such as Milan. We have the military to mm-hmm. sort out these issues. We have certain areas which are less affected, where you can have a person going to the supermarket, get things for the neighborhood, or get things for for those in the house, just to minimize minimize contact, minimize. Um, um, Focus, um, push away social uh, distancing, all those things to infection level because uh, cases are so much. Now, speaking of that, is, has there been anyone or is there anyone who uh, you are close to or you've, one of your friends who has been affected by, by this? Uh, I don't know if they will allow me to mention. Uh, no, of sure. course, you can't mention name, but <laughs> my names. But you can say if, if there are a few guys who. Yeah. I... yeah I... mm. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry about that. I remember you were saying about uh, last night when you were having a chat. You said that uh, one of your neighbors uh, was, was affected by this, uh, and it's a shock because, as you said, you were talking with him one day, then the next it affected him. So, uh, is, as as you've said, we, we also see the same trend in the country where guys are being told to quarantine, guys are being told to, to stay at home, but we have um, some who are ignoring. Um, we know that in Kenya it's, it's a bit different from Italy, uh, reason being that most, most of, our, of us are, are hand-to-mouth um, sort of um, livelihood, uh, and it's different there. Um, uh, and I, I I know that there are some lessons from us to learn from Italy. Um, I saw in the in the papers the other day uh, a guy was saying that uh, Kenya will be the next uh, Italy of Africa, which which is a bit heartbreaking. But in your opinion, um, what would you advise us to do uh, as someone who's there and has seen it? Uh, whatever I will say. Uh... There's this thing about the red zone. People saying, uh, don't go to this place, don't go to this place. First of all, I will say that the red zone is the, the person next to you. That's the red zone. Distance, be safe, stay home. And then I will say is that uh, stay where you are. If the lockdown found you, for instance, in Nairobi, stay in Nairobi. Do not... Uh, run home, do not rush the rural areas. That is the mistake I think, uh, we made in this side of ours. Because, uh, you know, people, once you announce that uh, there is a, the, the number of cases are increasing in this region, people panic and people want to move. But we also realize that uh, for this COVID-19, the incubation period is uh, around 2 to 14 days. So you may have that you just have a flu or a normal cold, 
But uh, may never know that you are carrying the virus with you. That is the problem. Uh, the next thing is that uh, as much as they are saying that we should avoid to put on masks and uh, leave them for those who are affected, because yesterday I was reading uh, the news from Kenya and uh, I have this story about uh, a priest who came from Rome, something like that. Positive. Now, I, you know how everyone going to the priest, uh, shaking hands, the sacrament. I was just thinking, uh, if one or two have this virus within that place, then it means the it means that three quarter of the people who are around them have contacted the virus. The thing is that uh, they have only not tested, so they don't know that they have the virus, or they don't know that they may. Have. So my, if you have any flu sign symptoms, put on a mask, take your way to hospital, get tested. Now you don't put on a mask to prevent yourself from getting the virus, but prevent yourself from the virus. That's what that that is what I will advise. Uh, obviously, people have read about sanitizers, sanitizers, mm -hmm. sanitizers mm -hmm. soaps. And we need all serious. And we need to take them seriously. Mm -hmm. Seriously. Okay. So, um, it, as you've said, th that issue about traveling, um, I'm sure a few guys have 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 traveled or have started traveling, uh, and we've also been asked to to check on the symptoms. And if we suspect, we go to medical a medical center for testing. Uh, does the government there do mandatory tests? Did they do mandatory tests or they just say the same thing if you suspect that you are infected, you go for, for tests? When it started, uh, when it, started uh, it was uh, when you suspect you go for tests. But in between, uh, we had more cases. I think Italy is the only country that has, has tested most uh, people. So far, so good. Yeah. That's why we are having more reports every day. I've been very honest with this. Uh, it was, uh, just go tested if you feel. Uh, but we have places where, places like uh, Lombardy, places like Milan, where it's mandatory. You have to get, you have to make sure that uh, the person next to you is safe. It's, uh, it depends on you to make sure yeah. the person next to you is safe. Uh, what about, sorry? No, the challenge. Challenge is uh, we may not afford to to do yeah. the testing for everyone in our country. Mm -hmm. in our country. We that, uh, but we are saying that uh, we, avoid, uh, we can avoid the uh, situation where we carry the virus by trusting uh, trusting, uh, trusting, our, mm -hmm. trusting our systems, going there and saying, okay, I have I have I have this situation. Um, I feel like I am sick. I need to get mm -hmm. tested. We have to be honest. Mm -hmm. That's the point. We have to be honest. Mm -hmm. Not assume. And and no, uh, the, the sad part is about our country is, is uh, for example, there was that governor who knew that he had traveled to um, a prone area, an infected area, came back, did not self-quarantine, um, went around places, meeting people, greeting people, and he kept quiet about it. And as you've said, uh, there I think it came to a point where guys are honest. And I also think in our country, guys need to need to be honest and say, um, for example, I was in this country, I was in this state, um, the state was declared to have the virus, uh, I need to quarantine myself, I need to keep myself safe, I need to keep um, other guys safe. Now, uh, I, I understand that um, it might be difficult staying in the house for... A very very long time. So how is it for you, as in staying in indoors for for all that time? How long have you been indoors, and how is it? It's I think. Uh, uh, it's I think. Uh, by the end of this week, it's a month. Uh, we have people who have been staying uh, in a lockdown quarantine for almost two months here in Italy. So uh, in my region. Yeah, uh, the region where I am, they're a bit uh, lucky, I would say. Yeah, but it's uh, it's hell staying in the house <laughs> because uh, you know, being a sportsman, you are used to moving. I was used to kids. I was to 
school, I was used to having sessions, coaching sessions, all this stuff. I was used to working out. I was used to doing all these things. But I, all of us are not moving anymore. I'm not running. I'm not running out. I have to stay in the house on my laptop the whole day. Something I'm not... Probably someone who is working in an office uh, is used to this. But they also have their difficulties just staying in the house. Some change all of a sudden. You're not free anymore. You cannot move freely. You have to rely on someone else's permission just to something. By one uh, friends. This is even where you cannot see your family members. You have to uh, video call them, uh, video call them uh, while they're just yeah. a room away from you. So I would say it's uh, it's too uh, yeah. yeah. Not something. Mm. Right. So how how do you how do you keep in shape? Uh, considering that now you you are an athlete, how do you keep in shape? Do you train in the house? Uh, do you have uh, a gym in the house? Uh, how do you keep in shape? Uh, we did try to come up with something. It's not really a gym, but something close to it. At least it, we used whatever we have. Uh, you know the the normal gym, the the one for the cement, the concrete. We tried getting them because we were late with the buying the workouts. Uh. Mm -hmm. So I try to work out in the morning, mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. evening, sometimes depending mm -hmm. on the schedule. I don't have space to run, so I will do mm -hmm. basic workouts, home workouts. Home workouts. I will do a little bit of stick work, and that's it. But now I'm focusing more on core body workout, and I'm hoping that. Uh, very soon, things will change, so I that so that I get back to the field. I hope. Uh, yeah, ho hopefully, hopefully we will have um, uh, um, a cure for it, a vaccine for it, um, because currently the situation is not is not good. Like where I live, um, it, it looks like a ghost town. Everyone is indoors. There are no kids riding bikes. Um, the most shops are closed. Um, uh, where I work, it's a complete. I work in a school, so obviously the uh, shutdown was done. So we are at home, staying at home. Um, at least I have a bit of luxury. I can walk out, um, walk on uh, the estate roads, at least get some sunlight. But I can imagine how difficult it is for you guys. I think the only way you can get some sunlight is if you go to the balcony <laughs> to experience. <laughs> Yeah. Ooh, it's cold. It's cold. It's cold. In fact, uh, yesterday oh, it's almost okay. snowing. Yeah. So, imagine, so you can imagine. I've not seen. I don't know how long. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know how long. <laughs> yeah. So so I I I yeah. I um I I'm sorry, man. I I know it's it's very difficult where you are. I just hope uh, it won't get to that point in our country. But guys, as you've had, this is this this coronavirus is serious. We need to take it serious. Um, I know most of us can't stay two, three days indoors. <laughs> but now imagine staying indoors for a whole month or two. Uh, it's, it's, it's very, very, very difficult. Now, uh, there's a question that has come through in terms of hockey now, going back to hockey matters. Um, someone asks, um, any future plans uh, for you to come back and assist in the development of the sport in the country? Of course, I want. I want to. I will. I will do it. I must do it. Uh, I have drive. I have seen how they implement. I have learned from them, and I want to see my country go even better than. I want us to compete at this level, or much higher level. But the truth that we have to really face the reality, and that. At the moment, we are not ready. We are not ready to compete at these high levels. And we have to start nurturing from the grassroots. That is what I will say. But that really will depend much on uh, young blood, like me and uh, all these people out there who have uh, experienced, who have gone out, who have seen how things yeah. are working out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, uh, yeah. Because... Uh, 
majorly I feel uh, you know we have two generations in our playing uh, playing times. Mm. We have your generation mm. and we have my generation. In part of my generation, we believe to be told that uh, this guy was good. This guy played the Olympics. This guy did this. This guy did this. But uh, we really haven't mm. done it, or we really have met, haven't met the expectations of those who yeah. killed us. So they, mm. that we need to work and uh, really work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um... I agree with you. Um, also, growing up, I was told the same thing, uh, that these guys have played in the Olympics, these guys have, have achieved a lot. And um, as you've said, my generation is different from your generation because only a few players in my generation have, have gone out to play in Europe or other countries. Right now, we have a couple of players who've gone out to play, like yourself, uh, we have the likes of Jili Okumu, uh, Danston Baraza, we have the likes of, um, yeah, who, who, who um, other than, okay, it's unfortunate they didn't go out this time because of, of the coronavirus, but we have more players who are going to play abroad, which is good, at least we're having someone locally who's scouting players and and, and and giving them a chance to go outside there and, and play, which uh, was not happening uh, during my time. And uh, we need players like you, um, even if you wouldn't play in the national setup, we need players like you who will bring back that experience, especially to the grassroots level. So we've seen that we have uh, a couple of clubs, a couple of academies being set up. For example, we have Tunza Sports, Wazalendo have theirs. Um, we have... Uh, uh, like Hesa Bredalins, uh, just a neighbor here, who, who are setting up academies. We also have, uh, I saw, okay, I watched um, some games in, in Mombasa and I saw kids playing amazing, amazing hockey. So I think the next level we need to take this is in terms of either an exchange program or a partnership. I think it's high time Kenyan clubs started partnering with uh, clubs in Europe uh, or in other um, top-ranked uh, hockey nations. Uh, we, we can have an exchange program where uh, they can bring in their coaches, uh, give us uh, their insight on the game. We can also have some of the top players in our clubs go out there, uh, play, let's say, a season or half a season just to get the exposure. Uh, we can even set up friendlies between clubs. So I think that's, that's the next level we should as, aspire to. And as you've said, um, and I like what you you, you guys are doing. Uh, that is during the day you go to schools, you, uh, um, you teach them about the game, you educate them about the game. Uh, that's something that most of us here don't do. Uh, what we usually do is uh, either we go to campus, we get a guy who plays there, and, and that's it. So I think it's high time. Um, where most clubs play, they are high, uh, high schools or sec- uh, primary schools around. So... If we can do that, if we can have those outreach programs, then it will be fine. Okay, it's it might be tricky because we don't have resources, but it's not a must that <laughs> we go there and give kids hockey sticks. Sometimes we can decide, let's go with the equipment we have, um, let's show them how it's played. Uh, we can decide to do it either twice a month or once a week. Yeah. Uh, so, um, sorry? Can I say? Can I yeah. say something about resources? Um, I will give you an, um, mm-hmm. will give you an example. In schools, we don't use uh, carbon fiber glass sticks. Promotion. Mm-hmm. Plastic sticks. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll just show you one. Yeah. Someone is, someone is getting me one. Okay. Then I'll show you. Yeah. Use plastic for promotion. Mm-hmm. First of all, because it's very dangerous for... For a six-year-old or a seven-year-old kid uh, in school mm-hmm. who has just learned a new sport mm-hmm. to use a carbon uh, fiber stick, yeah. imagine something. something. Yeah. yeah. And second of all, because it's true that uh, hockey is an expensive game for everyone, not only for Kenya. So I think, uh, in my opinion, what I've seen here about investing in the sports, it's the players who played bringing in their children to play. From grassroots level, mm. and, that and that is what we are not doing. Uh, this is an example of a plastic stick. Mm-hmm. 
It's all plastic. Ah, okay. And how These much? How much use. does it go for? Um, not sure. I'm not sure, but I think it's uh, very cheap oh, okay. because it's plastic. Mm. I will find out and I will let you know. Okay. Okay. Anyway, I was. What happens here is uh, people who played hockey bring in their children and families to play hockey. Now, for instance, if you're playing hockey and uh, your son is playing hockey, your mother will uh, the mother of the son will definitely come to watch the son play hockey. Now, if your son is uh, committed to these sports, if your son loves these sports, you will give everything to make sure he enjoys the sports. Parents do everything to make uh, their children happy. And that's a point we are really not looking at. Mm. I think we are focusing more on someone uh, who is 18, someone who is 15. Mm. Whilst they have already tested other sports, they, at 19, at 17, it's very difficult to convince someone to um, commit himself to your sport. You know, it's very difficult. They have uh, they are facing their adolescent stage. Mm. They have prep. Mm. They have other things. Yeah. In there. Mm. And that's true. So I think we need to start from grassroots level, just like you said, was Alendo are doing it. Um, we have the National uh, Academy, I think. Yeah. But I think even at club levels, all these clubs should try and uh, come up with the under 10s, under 12s, under 16, and the future of uh, this hockey. That is how we get investors coming in. That is how the investor is the actually the, the parent. The investor is uh, through the kids. That is how I would say. That's how, that's what I see here. Okay. Um, I think Griffin, it's it's been nice talking to you. It's nice to see that you're safe. Um, I know you you live with some other uh, guys, uh, people in, in in your house. Uh, send our regards to, uh, to them. Um, uh, from OKK, from myself, um, we send our deepest condolences and our concerns to those who have been affected by the virus. And the guys, you've heard uh, what Griffin had to say. Uh, he's in Italy. Uh, it's a serious matter we need to take into account. So, uh, Griffin, any closing remarks as we end this live stream? Uh, what I would say is that uh... Even the sport itself depends on uh, our safety. Mm. You've seen uh, everything closed. For those who love football, it's not there anymore. For those who love basketball, hockey, it's not there anymore. So you realize that even the investors who are investing in sports, they really depend on our safety. Once you're not safe, we cannot play anymore. It all depends on your safety. So I will advise that... Uh, May it come that coronavirus will pass and uh, may it come that we will conquer the virus. I will advise that we we try and keep observing these uh, little things we are being told, little directives from health, uh, because a lot of people ignore these things about health, the guidelines and everything. Because uh, had we started uh, washing our hands much earlier, had we started observing these little things all over the world, we will have very fewer cases. Uh, lastly, I would like to also thank Hockey KE for this opportunity to talk. I would like to ask those who are watching to really respect the government directives, follow them, stay home and be safe. Yeah. That is all I would say for now. Mm. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Griffin. Uh, it was nice having a chat with you. I'm proud of you. Um, as your former coach, I'm proud of the work you're doing. Um, and I keep tell, I keep challenging you. Uh, don't settle for less. Don't be comfortable. Keep pushing. Um, I'm sure there are a lot of guys here at home. They look at you and you inspire them. So continue doing that. Continue working hard, and uh, continue using every opportunity. And once you come back, um, we I expect you to uh, transfer that knowledge to the younger generation. So as for now, uh, Grifo, be safe. Um, I've been Simon. Uh, I know most of you know me. <laughs> this is Griffin Okombe. Uh, Asandi Sana Shukran. Uh, guys, feel free to ask any questions. We, we will, uh, I'll get to try some uh, responses from Griffin and, and uh, reply to you. 
So asante sana kwa kuwa online guys. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye.